Howdy, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Stockport. I don't know why I started that with a cowboy theme. This could not be further from cowboy right now. If anything, now that I've said that, you'll probably want me to do cowboy if we ever get into the Champions League. So, it is a brand new season, season nine of Stockport County. We're in the Europa League this year, into the group stages straight away, which is pretty dope because it means we don't have to start European stuff. I've noticed this thing that makes my ears stick out like mad. We don't have to start Europe until near the end of September, so it means we get a little run in the league start to sort of bed in new players. And uh, we've actually spent less money this year, but I think it's a better effort all round. Fun fact, uh, I was putting this costume on like 10 minutes ago and I saw a neighbour out the window in their garden and we locked eyes and I, I genuinely wonder what on earth he thinks is going on up here now. <laughs> now, we're starting on this page because I sort of thought you might want to see where we're kind of at with the facilities at the club. Now, obviously, junior coaching and youth recruitment are maxed out, I think, although I do have to keep upping them every year. I think it's because they keep dropping. Uh, our youth level has gone up from two to three, though. Uh, sorry, three to two, which is nice. So we're playing at a slightly higher level there. We've been, the board have just kept pumping money and they improved the training and youth facilities yet again. So we're up to good and great for training training as well. Uh, the tra even the data analysis has now caught up finally, and I really do think it's important for us to have good youth facilities, particularly with the fact that our squad is so young. But we're also back in Edgley Park this year. 19,100. Oh, I get you. I bet you we're having lots of sellouts this year. Still probably the smallest ground in the Premier League, although maybe not. I don't know if Ashton Gate's smaller or bigger. Now, not a great deal has actually happened in the summer period, other than obviously signings and stuff. Now, there in theory are going to be more outs this summer, as I said there would be. Um, and I feel like the ins have been a bit more measured however there is one there's been a bit of weirdness and that's with pedro first i'm going to talk about him just going to turn off the comparison so you don't get to see any of the other players that i've signed that might well be in positions related to this or just appearing in this graph so yeah as you can see pedro is on a new contract 105,000 pounds a week now but this is where things get a little bit strange one of the first things i wanted to do uh, once we got all the money through was to try and get pedro on a new deal so that we could get rid of his release clause and whatnot because i thought that was super important if he plays as well as he did last year again Peep, the vultures will be circling. So, what happened was, I went into contract negotiations. Obviously, we had to give him more money. Um, he's not got any caps for Brazil, so I was, I was able to dangle that over him. I had to up the appearance fees because he wanted like 120 grand a week. But the key thing is here, I was able to negotiate out a release clause. And that was the most important thing for me, was to get rid of that. So, I got it to go green and I was like, right, perfect. It's, it's going to cost us a lot of money and like six, no, five million in like agent fees or something like that. But the point is it was to get it over the line and not have that release clause there. So it was green. I'd click suggest terms. It was green. I went to click finalize deal and then it went red. And I'm like, what? I hadn't changed anything in the offer and they hadn't either. But it had gone from being green when I suggested it and I hadn't touched anything and it went straight to red. And I was like, oh, so what? exactly the agent i don't know i've never seen that glitch happen if it is a glitch never seen that happen before and then i thought oh maybe it's just a glitch so i went out the next day and i went back into a contract negotiations and it said i'm not prepared to talk to you due to the breakdown in our previous talks and i'm like what you agreed a contract with us so yeah very very strange and you might be wondering so how is he on a contract well about three days later i got a news article through saying that he'd signed a new deal and i was like but okay sure and i thought oh maybe he signed the original deal so i went and looked in and yeah he, he had, except there was now a release clause in it. What? He now had the same deal that I offered him, but somehow a release clause had been added. And before you say, oh, you're director of football. Nope, I'm in charge of all of this. They have no say in it whatsoever. So now he does have a release. It's slightly better, but I don't know how they've managed to get this in there. He's got an £81 million release clause uh, for clubs in the Champions League which is better than £72 million to any club. But I'm still pissed. That I think it must have been a glitch in there somewhere because that doesn't seem like that should happen. Very, very weird. Point is, Pedro does have another year on his deal and a slightly better release clause, but it's frustrating because it costs us loads of money. But enough on that. What you really want to see is signings going in and out. So we're going to start with the outs. First big one out is Kit Kat. He's not actually gone, 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 but he has gone to Stoke uh, for the full season. They're going to pay all of his wages, plus, I think, like £45,000 a month. So it might even be more than that, actually. It's a fair amount. It could end up adding up to nearly £700,000 by the end of the season, uh, which is not too bad. Get some off of our wage bill. I just think he's, he's not really worked out for him here. I was going to try and move him on, but if Stoke are willing to take us off his hands for a season and pay us loads of money, oh, I was happy to do that. You know, I don't think we'd have got that much for him in a transfer anyway. So for Stoke to pay most of that, I was right. And he's broken his leg while he's on loan anyway, so he's no use to anyone. Nemanja Boscovic has gone out to QPR. Same kind of situation. Uh, they're paying, I think, all of his wages plus an extra £20,000 a month. So he'll do okay out on loan there. I think he'll be fine. He's already played one game for him in the league. What is important, Arna Puimau, he's left £3.1 million pounds to Hiro. Uh, it seemed like a good deal at the time. They came in, put the offer on the table, and I was like, you know what? He's probably not going to get many games for us, particularly this season with the way the midfield is now looking. So I figured getting £3.1 million pounds seemed like a reasonable deal. They're paying him a decent whack of change too. 
This is still a loan, but it's kind of interesting. Craig Palmer gone on loan to Brentford for the season. He's done wonders for any club he's played for before. And I wanted to give him a chance at a club that might be towards the higher end of the championship. And he's already got one in one. He's got a goal and an assist on his debut in the league for Brentford. Craig Palmer is an absolute star. All honesty, I feel like this guy might actually have a future with Stockport. That is for sure. But if nothing else, he's going to get a huge transfer value one day. Albert Asner's gone on loan to West Brom. They're paying £56,000 a month to have Albert Asner uh, for the year. I think they're playing in the championship. Although I'm not sure they are actually. He might get some Premier League experience this year with West Brom. So that'd be good for him. Mark McGowan's gone out, uh, sorry, gone out permanently to Locomotive Moscow for only three quarters of a million pounds. But I just, I needed the money at this point. And there's a couple more transfers that are very much in the in the ready to go. Now, Piero Bolina is technically still at the club uh, because I was trying to get rid of two players on the final sort of few days of the transfer window to facilitate a transfer. And in the end, I didn't actually need to, but I still want to go through with the transfers because I think it's for the good of their career. He's in negotiations with, I believe, Ajax and someone else. I can't actually remember who. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, so it's Ajax and Genk. Uh, they've po both got 10 million pound bids for Bolina on the table. And frankly, if we got 10 million pounds for Bolina, who we paid, I think, 1.8 for, that's a decent whack of change that we've just made on him. And it gives us an extra bit of money to play with. And it's a similar story with El in Kubat. He's under a £7.5 million bid from Genk, uh, Rosenberg, and one other team. I think it's Austria Vienne. Um, so yeah, he could well be off as well. But for £7.5 million, maybe we could have got a bit more for him in all honesty. But I felt like it was a good deal at the time and I thought we needed the extra funds for transfers because uh, things have gone a bit weird and there was one transfer I just really wanted to get over the line. Anyway, let's talk about the actual ins now. First one, Rodrigo Nacimento, uh, who's come in from Vitoria Gumares over in Portugal. Don't worry, this is not the first choice right back or anything like that. Uh, I saw the opportunity to bring him in for £60,000. I thought he looked like a solid one potentially for the future. And for that kind of money, I couldn't really say no. So he's in. There we go. Uh, also, there's Guthera, who's come in on loan. Sorry, come in permanently from Cruzeiro. I signed him a little while ago, but he's finally joined us. Obviously, he hasn't got a work permit. So he's gone out on loan to our affiliate for a season. See how he can do there, the central defender. He's not amazing, but, you know, it was just resale value. He's cost us 1.2 million, I think. So, again, future. It's a similar story with Paulo Sergio. He's another one of these ones that's coming from Brazil. £200,000. He came in from Nautico. Yeah, another player from Nautico. He's gone out on loan to try and get himself that work permit. Hopefully, we'll have that soon as well. And now the final of the sort of players for the future kind of signings. This is Daniel Christensen. That's why he doesn't have a face. Uh, he's come in from FC Copenhagen for three million pounds. He's a defensive, well, he's a central midfielder that can play the box to box role, which is kind of why I was interested. One for the future whose actual starting sort of position is a um, first choice box to box. He's got, gets into the opponent area, which is good. He's ambitious. He's six foot tall, got decent long shots. He's got a lot of the attributes I want from a box to box midfielder. He's only 18 years old, a long way to improve, I'm sure. But a good loan spell for him could certainly be useful for him this season and i think he's one for the future three million pounds quite a lot i grant you but remember we had 70 million to spend we signed a right back a proper one it actually happened however as always with the right back spot there was an issue so this is julio vigo he's come in from nacional over in uruguay and this guy now this guy is the is the real deal 18 crossing for a right back that, our wingers don't even have 18 crossing. But it's not just that. He's six foot tall. He's listed as a wonder kid, which is nice. He doesn't dive into tackles. He's got that composure. Marking, passing, tackling of 11, heading of 14, which is nice. Good physicals. He's got great stamina. Amazing pace. A lot of things to like. Even his dribbling isn't that bad. And he's still only 20 years old. Five caps for Uruguay. Now, there's no work permit. And I was like, you know what? He's 20 years old. He was 19 when we signed him. I thought, I, I can't miss out on this guy. £7 million he's come in for. I know he can't play for us this year, but I feel like it's worth it. Because if he does keep going for Uruguay and whatnot, he might be able to get a work permit. If not, we might have to wait the two years. But I feel like he is one for the future for us, but definitely is that player that we've been missing on that right side for me. He is so, so good for what we wanted to do there. Even if his dribbling isn't amazing, that will still improve. Good decisions, a lot of good mental abilities too. Good leader as well, which is what I really like. Great long throws too which could be very very useful i'm a huge fan of julio vega even if he can't play for us immediately i'm hoping that we can sort something out in the future but uh, <laughs> machado honda are going to have one hell of a player on their hands this year over in spain with uh, maldonado i think it is in the middle but as a result of that happening i then had to kind of think you know is it worth trying to sign another fullback or should we bring in someone on loan for the year so i brought in milan durand who was a guy i was actually looking at before but he eventually made the decision to sign for uh no wait i think he yeah uh, he went he was a Le uh, an olympic leon player so i wasn't going to really be able to sign him but i thought he'd do a reasonable job for us this year he has got the fickle personality but he's got he's six foot four but he's got a lot more ability i think his crossing isn't amazing but he's got decent dribbling decent defensive stats not bad mentals either though leadership's a bit poor i still think he'll do an okay job in that side and you know we've got another option in there as well so i think he'll do okay for the season i think we might just rely on loan players until vigo uh 
is able to come and play for us, basically, because I think that's our best bet. And Bruno Bridges is still here, so don't worry. And just to really make sure that we have options in that position this year, I also brought in Valentino Lazaro, an Austrian who's on loan uh, from Bayer Leverkusen for the full year. That's right, I signed a real player, lads. It actually happened. Um, mainly because, firstly, he's got, you know, three stars is fine and all that, but he's actually got really decent crossing and dribbling and first touch. There's a lot to like about this guy. Slightly shorter, um, but still, you know, nine heading. It's not great. Um, but the key thing about him is he can actually play further forward if we need him to. So he's actually a fill-in player for both right back and right wing, which I think is really, really nice to have that option, really. He was listed for transfer for £30 million, which is a lot for me. So I figured having him on loan for the season made way more sense than trying to buy him at this point because we'd never get our money back on that deal. Something that often comes up when we get to the Premier League in these sort of saves is why are you not signing English players? And for the most part, you're right, we're not. Uh, Charlie Dyer we signed, obviously, last year. But he was the most expensive signing uh, we made at that point, And we didn't really get much bang for our buck in terms of the money that we paid for him because we could have got a lot less. Uh, sorry, a lot more for a lot less. And the simple reason why I don't is because nationality is not an attribute that affects how well a player plays for the most part. Now, of course, there is the homegrown thing, but the thing is, the reason I signed the players so young is because they qualify as homegrown by the time they're old enough. For example, Morgan Roussel uh, next year is going to be a homegrown player, despite being French. Uh, Camille Bednar is a similar kind of issue. Uh, not even an issue, really. Uh, Josef Beiser, same kind of thing. A lot of these players are going to be in that position, which means we won't really have to worry about that. And more importantly, remember, just because I'm not signing English players doesn't mean we're not bringing them through. Our youth academy is excelling and we've got an awful lot of really, really good young prospects that are going out on loan and slowly building themselves up. They're just a little bit younger at the moment. And it, it purely just comes down to economics in, at the end of the day. It's I'm not going to pay more than I need to for a player if I don't need to. And he is going to hopefully be our first choice uh, defensive midfielder this year. Now, I have signed a backup option to really boost that area too, though. So we'll have Booty, we'll have Charlie Dyer, but we've also got El Chob over here. And I really, really like this guy. He's professional. He's a wonder kid he's cost i think 13 million pounds uh from groningen that was his release clause so i was really happy to trigger that uh compared to the guy from arsenal who was transfer listed for 40 odd million um and again he's 19 years old so i don't know if he will ever be able to qualify as homegrown but he might well just be able to squeak in there you never know um but hey i don't really care i think he's gonna be really solid one day but just to be extra sure that we've got covering options in that role, I also got Leander Dendonka uh, in on loan from Ajax for the season for not a huge amount of money, frankly. We're paying his wages plus a little bit more. Actually, I'm not even sure if we are. Um, but I really want to make sure that we had someone that's a bit more experienced, a little bit taller, and is a bit more developed to play in that role if we need to. We're going to be playing more games this year, so we need to have more rotation options. And I figured someone that's a little bit older that we don't have to worry about trying to move on one day uh, would be good for a season. He's more of a sort of slightly taller player. Uh, plays no through balls and runs with ball rarely, which is nice. Um, I'm a fan of him being a sort of sitting player when we really need him to. Next up is a striker. Now, I did actually look for strikers, but we'll talk about him first. So this is Corbinian uh, Gadeis, who is a German striker. He's coming from Greuterfurt, uh, who are a second slash third tier sort of team in Germany. Now, he was rated higher and higher the more my scouts looked at him. Now, he, he's decent now. He's a reasonably good player now. Obviously, you know, complete forward, he's not really there yet. Although, I think that, I'm not really sure why that is. I still think like, you know, it wouldn't take him long to be able to get to that point. Resolute personality, decent dribbling, finishing, heading. He's six foot one. He's got all those things that I want to see. Reasonable physicals as well. He's got decent pace, agility, acceleration. All the things I kind of want from a striker. He's cost us... Well, how much did he cost us? We can see. 12.5 million pounds uh, from Greuter. And this is that guy. Abderazak Slawi. Now, this is a strange one. Because you're looking at him going, hang on, he's an attacking mid. Why did you sign an attacking mid? I know. But I feel like he's only 22. We can definitely mould this guy into one of two things for us, basically. And now I'm leaning towards centre mid rather than striker because his finishing is only 12. And I think, but you've already spotted it, 20 passing. He has 20 passing. I, I could not say no when this guy became available. £31 million is our record transfer, I grant you. But Spurs and Barcelona were both interested in this guy. And he chose to sign for Stockport. Now, that probably means that they weren't super interested. But it was enough for me to go, okay, there might be something to this guy. And it made me have a closer look. And I just thought, 18 dribbling as well. Now, I feel like he could definitely do the job as a deep line playmaker. Look at the passing. The, the technique. The vision. Work rate. He's got decent work rate too. Decisions. Composure. Dribbling. Uh, great agility pace he's five foot ten he's not super short he avoids using his weaker foot which is fine fairly professional huge fan of that but i do wonder if maybe deploying him more as an advanced playmaker might work even better to make use of that dribbling and agility a little bit more and he could be a real killer for us to be honest we had to move a lot of money around but this is why i was trying to move on some guys because i really thought that this guy could be next level good for us and i know we've got davidson and i know we've got a Quaibu, but when a player comes available that has 20 passing and some of these abilities, I just thought there's no way that 
it, we won't we, we will surely make money on this deal he does have a release clause i think it's 105 million uh but we can try and work on that the point is if we were to sell him for 105 million that would still be 70 million pounds profit so there is that so that's kind of what I've done regarding transfers. I know it's not as many as usual, but I feel like it was bad to have some players that I really felt would strengthen and some youngsters rather than trying to overhaul the whole squad again because we could get into similar problems as last year where the new players don't quite fit what I want to do. And I know this guy doesn't entirely, but I feel like if he plays, he will still play extraordinarily well. So for today, we actually are the favourites. It's very nice. Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, Managing Wolves. Let's go. Uh, first game of the season at Edgley Park. I really want to see if this works. So obviously this is not the lineup I want to go with. This is just what's kind of been from the last... Some of these, I swear to God, it, unless you manage your friendlies individually yourself, it seems like they'll never put the right players in. It's a pain, but we have to deal. So midfield, Bicer, still our man up top. Pedro, still the man on the left, no problem. Abasolo, still a man on the right, no problem. But the, we've got options on this right-hand side now with Durand and Lazaro. I, I just wish we still had Vega. And as for this, I mean, we've got Bova, Dyer, Dendonka and Booty. That's a real back... Lots of options here, you know? This is the kind of game that Slawi could make his debut for us in this position, but I'd be tempted to play him as an advanced playmaker instead on support. So he's just sitting slightly higher, particularly as we've got an anchor man now. It might just space out our midfield three a little bit more and allow them a little bit more space to do what they want to do. And I just really want to see this guy run at people, frankly. So on the bench, oh, what options do we want to go for on the bench? Bench, we're going to go with Stubbs, Lazaro, Dendonka, Okoro, Makengo, Akwebu, and Liam Miller. Lots of options, lots of strength in those positions. And fact is, the squad itself is looking stacked now with, with options for days. And I'm a fan of that, quite frankly. I've noticed that Bova and Mello look very similar. Don't worry, it's not the same face. I didn't make that mistake. I have a list to make sure. Now, obviously, it's going to be tough with us fighting on four fronts, essentially, this year. And particularly as the board expect quarterfinals of the Europa League. Now, I feel like because we're a reasonably decent side, we'll get a good draw in the Europa League group stages, as you'd like to think. So we'll see. A save by Wilson. That's that's actually quite a difficult play for us there. Bicycle could bring that down. Oh, my goodness. Space that wife for Abasolo. Here we go. Break on for us, potentially. Can he cut inside and find a cross? He does. Pedro! What a save. And that was more like a Liam Miller style of run as well, which was very nice. Abasolo again. I want to see what Slowey's like on the ball. Abasolo, can he dig another cross out? He does. Ooh, Slowey again. Running through everybody. Good save. Nice. That's what I like to see. Okay, nil-nil at half time. Not a lot going on. We've pulled the possession back a little bit. We need to have a look at this. There is also the slight issue of the players not being up to full match fitness yet. And obviously still sort of learning some of the new players and whatnot. And some of the roles. Like, I don't expect us to come out and beat Wolves here 6-0, you know. I just expect us to put a reasonable performance. Abasolo, can he dig a cross out? Oh, that's not good at all, is it? And I do just wonder if moving Slowey back to the deep line playmaker role on support might just help a little. I don't know. Slowey again. Picks the ball up. Has a little run. He's got a nice little burst of pace about him too, which I really like. You can go past people with the ball. Look at this. Slowey. Can he get across in? He does. Oh, nice work from him though. Oh, nice work, Roussel. Very nice work, actually. Can he slip it in for Pedro? He can, you know. Pedro's gone past one. Can he dig across that? He does. Oh, lovely goal. And at Abasolo at the back post. We've looked much better since that little switch to pull Slowey back into a deep line playmaker role. I think he might well have to play there. This was nice work. It might be completely coincidental, but Roussel, nice work out to Pedro. Does a good job. And this is old school Stockport. Whips it across, comes to the back post. Completely unmarked. Abasolo, 1-0 Stockport. And we have the lead. It's not been super convincing, but we've taken our chance. What I would say is this has certainly not been a classic match, that's for sure. I just want to see us hold on. Don't you dare let him get the ball in. No! What a save from Wilson. Wolves' only chance of the game comes there and Wilson saved it. No? Oh, and over the bar again. Okay, final couple of minutes. We just need to see this out. Don't let, oh, God. Oh, God. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Whoa, for goodness sake. Well, oh, my God. In the, the dying minutes of this game, it's just all gone away from us as well. Unless Wilson steps up and is a hero here. And he's not. Abalo, the guy that I was looking at last year, Elio Abalo, I say steals an equaliser. It's not really. It's a fairly even match. Oh, that's frustrating. We haven't been great on the night, in fairness. Um, But to give away a penalty in the 90th minute like that is... Oh! Pedro to whip one in. Last chance of the match. Nope, it's going to be one all at Edgley Park. That's really frustrating. Um, We'll need to take a look at things, definitely, because... We still didn't look good on the night, to be fair. We were a bit fortunate. I mean, we weren't fortunate to get the goal. We deserved the goal. But, like, it just wasn't a good performance overall. And a draw... Like, these are the sort of games that we'd have won 2 or 3-0 last year towards the end. And we, we definitely need to look at that. I, I don't know if... I I'm really not sure, to be honest. I feel like we're okay. But we definitely need to pick things up a bit. So there we have it. It is frustrating. Goes without saying. I thought we'd got it. And then Bednar giving away that penalty in the 90th minute. When I don't really think he needed to either. That's the most frustrating thing. The get stuck in might have been wise to turn that off when we got in front. I don't really know. But that might have just given them more pressure on us. Um, hopefully it's just a little bit of a 
you know, teething problems uh, with the squad fitness and whatnot. And hopefully we'll get ourselves back to where we were. Uh, it just wasn't the greatest performance, really, was it? Just like the start of last year, really. Anyway, next episode, it's going to be Europa League. It has to be, really, doesn't it? First game in the Europa League. Quite a few games off camera uh, with Man United and Liverpool in there, too. But, you know, we, we have to do a Europa League tie. You know, we simply have to. Uh, and that's going to be the first... the yeah, first ever game in Europe is going to be the next episode. I can't wait to see who we get. That's going to be awesome. Anyway, if you have enjoyed this, despite the slightly iffy opening match of the season, hopefully we can get into it a bit more with the, the next couple of games. I really hope. Otherwise, we're going to have to do the same kind of stuff as last year. And that starts to get annoying when you wonder why that's happening. But there you go. Um, yeah, if you've enjoyed it, drop a like on the video. That'd be awesome. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for more videos like this in your inbox every single day at 6. And I'll join you guys tomorrow for our first ever game in Europe. The adventure begins. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.